Yes, Capital Lecture, what's going on? Robert Bruce in the studio, Saturday, 4 till 7 p.m. Everything homegrown, all things UK. And I get to bring in my favourite artists into the building as well. In front of me right now, I have a super talented, super unique, you can't put her in a box, creative... I don't know what the adjectives I can, you know, I'm running out of adjectives to describe this lady already. Her music's absolutely sick. I am DDB in the building, everybody. Hey, friend. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for coming. How are you? I'm good, man. I've had a fantastic start to the year. Happy 2020 to you and all the listeners. You know... Yeah, man, DDB's been doing the most behind the scenes. Like, okay. when I go quiet, I always say, be be scared. Because when I go quiet, I'm always doing something. But no, man, it's been it's been a huge... My whole experience of the industry has been a huge learning experience, not only as a musician, but as a person. Mm. So, yeah, man, ask away. There's yeah. nothing off limits. <laughs> Let's, nothing do off limits yeah. <laughs> Let's do Let's do this. Let's do this. There's a lot we want to get into today, but first and foremost... I want to get to know you a mm-hmm. little bit more. What's the musical background? I know there's a musical mm-hmm. family in there. Mm-hmm. What was your journey into music? What's your musical background? Okay, so my dad's a musician. I grew up at home. We had a studio. There was always um, musicians, instruments in and out of the crib. So me growing up, my playtime was just messing with guitars, playing around with the keyboards and stuff. And... Um, I feel like the collection of music that my dad used to play when I was little really impacted me as the musician that I am today. Mm. So things like Afro soul, Afro jazz, a lot of um, Angolan genres like Kilapanga, Kuduru, Kizomba. These are probably genres that like people in the UK are not very familiar with. But if you go back and check like the rhythms, the tones, you kind of understand mm. why DDB is the way she is. But yeah, man, grew up like that. Um, in high school, I did performing arts. Um, college, I studied, um, I did a vocal artist course. Um, you so I it's went been to music all the way. It's, listen, yeah. like my choice, yeah, was either music or law. But then when I thought about the time <laughs> I would have to spend in the library, my gosh, no, no, yeah. no, 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 you're not trapping me today. I used to think seven, eight hours a week. No, I could be making seven, eight albums. So mm. that for me was just the moment where I decided music's gonna be my my ride or die. Like yeah. it's either a go or it's nothing. Um, with uni, I went to uni for an hour. What? Yeah, Just, I went to study that's it. <laughs> English literature and language. I was in there for 60 minutes, my G. I said, you know what? Yeah. Lecture was fabulous. <laughs> I want to apply it in real life. Though. I don't want to be doing no dissertations and all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I left. The same day I left uni, I dropped the out and nothing was the same. Like, that was the same the day? The same day. The same day I dropped the out and then like... No way. Maybe after a month, I clocked like, wow, okay. Like, the views are actually going up. Mm-hmm. And that's when I decided like, D, you can actually do this. You just need to focus yeah. and everything else will pattern itself. The lean out take off straight away or... Is it accumulated over time? It was accumulated. Yeah. Definitely. It began to bubble. I'd say after I dropped volume two, that's when I started noticing that, rah, Lean Doubt is doing its thing because mm. Lean Doubt was never on a project. That was just a little thing that mm. I just did. Um, and yeah, from Lean Doubt, I was just like, you know what? You're kind of lit. You just yeah. continue <laughs> flowing and experiencing and just learning, adapting to different genres and just see what happens. Yeah. And thank the Lord that the reception has been so so amazing like i've been able to travel the world i've been able to meet so many people connect with global audiences so i can't complain man if you compare where i am today mm-hmm. to where i was in 2016 hey <laughs> where gosh. was you 2016 then blood i was i was sharing a flat with about four or five different people. Oh, yeah. Like, and that was like a one bedroom. So you do the math. Like, yeah. How is that even? <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a lot, but like it just taught me to appreciate the struggle and it really um taught me to character build. Even being in this music industry, like I got thrown in the deep end, but mm. you know, I'm a bit a water baby, so I'm, I can swim through the oceans and shit. <laughs> but yeah, I found my way. I got a great team behind me, Union IV, you know, 2020. I've been shouting 2020 since yeah. God knows when. <laughs> you get me? So everyone's so this like, is your what's year, you're 2020? That's why I've been quiet, like low key, keep it simple, keep it cute. 
album on the way, tour on the way. Okay, oh, all of this things. stuff. There's You're good excited. Things. You're I'm excited so about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so excited, man. <laughs> yeah. That's wicked. You spent some time in Africa, I yes, believe, I doing did. music. What was that journey for you? <sighs> that was a spiritual a spiritual cleanse and just whew, even when I think back to it I'm just yeah. like wow we when really did it? that 2016 2016 okay I finished college and I was just like I need to experience something different so my dad was like why don't you come to Africa I was like you know what book me a flight and come in for six months meanwhile I've never been to Africa you know for I did real. not know what to expect so mm-hmm. I threw myself in the deep end I think I have a a habit of doing that just throwing myself in the deep end of things best way um and yeah man just being in africa was such an eye opener i'm not gonna lie the first 72 hours i was going under really <laughs> i was like no no no, no. electric's not working the water's not working <laughs> ah like get me home get me home but after the first week i was like no this is lit and it was so amazing to be able to reconnect with my roots after being in england for so long and just to see the culture shock to know that people in Africa may not have the most luxurious lives, but they are so content just with spirit and soul. And then you come to somewhere like England and it's like, we are so spoiled. <laughs> How are we this depressed and unhappy? Like, it really made me check myself, my spirit, my soul, my being, like just the things that I chose to connect with. And yeah, man, was out there with my dad. We were doing like, we were kind of touring low key, um, performed for the president we were on yachts like it was lit and doing that in a third world country made me understand that Ross if you can do that there imagine what you can do in a place mm. like England are you so I was like you know what? gee my dad I was like gee has been lit but yeah. I need to go back there and do my <laughs> thing over there like and that's what I did and God willing thank the Lord yeah, that it's, it's, it's going well, well. It's going that was well. in Angola to be precise right yes yeah, it was yeah. Wicked. We're going to talk about Manchester real soon as well, because obviously yes, in the building represented. Come on. But chat to me about Shade then, because I feel this is the song that the wide mm. audience got to know you a little bit. Mm. Shade, man. Big up Diego on production. Um, Shade was just really me and the producer catching a vibe in the studio. Um, that was the first track we did from Hoodrich Volume 3. And after we did that, we were like why don't we just make a whole project? And that's what we did. We made Ooh, Conjure and Running, etc. And that was just the one track that people gravitated to because I feel like it gives you bad B vibes, but at the same time, it's lighthearted and it's just empowering. Mm-hmm. It's fun. It's, it's like, fun. it's not too serious, but at the same time, it touches on subjects like love, like light flexing, not stunting, just a light flex. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's just, you know, it's just one of them that you can turn up to, feel good to and just have a a, a lit time with your friends how did it impact your career at that point um if i'm being honest Mm. with you when shade was doing its thing and not to say that it was a global smash but like for me where i was that Mm. was a lot to deal with at the time so um i definitely wasn't prepared for all the attention that it, it attracted. Yeah, so is that what, is that what happens It was a lot. Year? Like, I was really just trying to hide in my little cocoon <laughs> and just do my thing. And my manager's like, no, we've got to go and take over the world. I thought you were going to hide. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it was just struggling a lot. Like, as well, I was young, man. I was young in my mind, in my mm. spirit. So it was a lot to deal with. But, you know, we doubt it. We tried to keep it cute. We tried to continue just dropping good music um, as well. Like, as soon as... Volume 3 dropped We got thrown straight on A 50 tour date With Bryson Tiller Is that with Bryson Tiller? These times point? I've yeah. never been on tour So I'm like What do you mean? Yeah. Like, these times I'm fangirling Like yeah I used to listen to you In high school <laughs> Like it was such a mad experience But even that It just helped me Understand that D if, When you focus You attract everything You don't even have to beg it Like mm. so just us keep your head down and yeah since then like we've been on tour with Bryson Tiller Janae Aiko Lauren Hill yeah, like yeah. I miss everyone out no yeah like it's been amazing mm-hmm. like seeing so many sides of the world like how can I how could how could I be unhappy how yeah. could I complain like <laughs> wow I wake up and I do what I love every day so it's priceless 
I read somewhere on the Lauren Hill tour, mm. she gave you the advice to never conform, just to yes. always be yourself. And I feel like when I think of IMDb, I feel like she's just her, man. Like I love she's that. her first and everything else comes after. Mm -hmm. How's that been for you battling, like coming in quite young, <sighs> growing, but being in the limelight and trying to be yourself and not conforming that way? You know what, at times it's been very challenging because I've always been a very outspoken person and I have a very strong opinion. And at one point I didn't realise how much my voice made an impact on the people that followed me. Mm. Um, so at times my mouth has got me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Do I regret? No. But, you know, uh, I've learned, i learned. Nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's helped me develop who I am as a person. And now, DDB that you saw in Shade is a completely different version of DDB you see in 2020. Like, now we know how to move in certain places. We know that, you know, in the industry that we're in, you kind of have to hold back saying certain things, even if you do agree with, you know, something that might be going on in politics or something that might be going on in religion. That's one thing that my dad always said, D, mm -hmm. never get involved with politics and religion just scoot, scoot, scoot. <laughs> like just don't do it because it gets it's so it's the ways of the world in it it's too yeah. delicate and furthermore we're musicians in it we're here to make good music we're here to raise vibrations that's why everywhere we go i'm always on this raise the vibration raise the frequency because when everybody's on that high frequency mm -hmm. we can all be lit like For real. lit lit <laughs> so yeah man that's always the motive I hear you, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about Manchester then. Oh, one six, one yeah. six. Oh <laughs> my days. Listen, money is the best place in the UK. I don't, I don't business in it. Like we have so much diversity, not only in music, in people. Like there's not one road in Manchester you walk down and people are cold. Like everyone's just like, you're right. Yeah. Like, eh, <laughs> like we're so Larry. And it's that energy that, really helps me create the vibes like leaned out the vibes like pause the vibes like back again it's like manchester helped me not only go through personal my own personal journeys with relationships and friends and just you know surroundings environments but as a musician as well because like through hip-hop through the influences of jazz all of these different genres going around and because Manchester's a small place, yeah. we all were connected. Like there was an era in Manchester where you wouldn't, they wouldn't just be one artist. Like we were all interconnected. Like we yeah. all knew one another. So it was a great time of just collaboration, of supporting one another's it's art. And I miss system. that, man. I Do miss you? it because it's like, now it's like, not even just for Manchester, but in cities in general, you have like the main faces and then everybody's kind of forgotten about, but really like it's in the gaps where you forget that the good the source old, lies, yeah. do you get me? So yeah, man, you just got to stay open-minded and understand that in the most unpredictable places, you'll find magic. So what about if I said to you, three artists from Manchester that the world needs to know more about? Layful Stop, Woody Green and KSR, 100%. Okay. And Tyler Daly and Children of the Jews. Oh my God, there's so many, there's so <laughs> many, there's so many. Wow. What about the UK music scene in general? How do you feel about that? Because obviously I always say you're you're not in no box. You're very mm -hmm. unique. But how's your relation with the UK music scene and what do you think of it and where it's at now? Me personally as DDB, and when I speak about DDB, I'm talking about her as a brand, not me, Sahia. Mm. Um, I see her as a global sound, so I don't really look at it as a UK thing, mm. although we're from the UK. But I don't really listen to UK music, and that's no disrespect to anyone, but I always go back to my original catalogue. So the Bob Marleys, the um, Miles Davis, the Gretchen Parlatos. I like my classical music. Like that's mm. where the, the real vibes for me come from. But if I had to pick, listen, I love M. Huncho. M. Yeah. Huncho <laughs> is one of the hardest in the UK. But even with him, I feel like with the UK artists, it's just a matter of exposure because mm. once the world hears your sound, it's a different ball game. So M. Huncho, um, okay, let me think. Let me really think about this. Green Tea Peng. She is, oh my goodness. She is a dream. Like yeah. her whole sound, <laughs> I have to watch this woman live because I know she's going to send me over the edge. Yeah. <laughs> um, who else? 
um let me think let me think of another guy um this is what i'm saying i'm so it's always um, hard when you're on the spot though. it really is um ksr man ksr sings like a bird like ksr sings like a angel you need to listen to him if you haven't already but yeah i'm really i'm kind of foreign when it comes to Some music, UK music. Like i'm okay. like oh like if i hear it out in a club and i'm I'll, i'm digging it i'll shazam it yeah <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> we all would. i shazam yeah, it and be yeah, like yeah. okay this is lit playlist cool mm. okay wicked so independence as well as an artist i see that you've sort of taken your time with things mm-hmm. that's why you're I feel, that's, I feel that's why like you're excited right now because you've mm. taken your time and you've arrived to this point. What's it been like being independent, learning about the industry? Mm. How's that journey been for you? It's been amazing. Like, I wouldn't have done it any other way. Like, I know that a lot of people feel like after Hoodbridge, I should have done the most and blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, mm, no, I'd rather chill. Like, And the one thing I wanted to make sure is that once I really solidified myself as an artist i was ready mentally emotionally spiritually physically because it's a lot it's a very demanding job and it's not every day that you want to wake up and be Mm -hmm. in the limelight sometimes you just want to sit back and pre the game sometimes you just want to sit back and study like the sounds the people why this is lit why this is streaming why this is working so it's it's i'm in such a blessed position and you know i'm not against labels but I am pro independence. independence okay. like, I like to do things my way. And if that means that a label will support that, then by all means. But for me personally, the thing that matters the most is the terms and conditions. Y'all mm. gotta read the terms and conditions. The small <laughs> print is so important. Like, yeah, man. But it is what it is and it depends what you make. Like, it depends what you make of it. If you know what you're doing, if you're business thirty, you can pattern everything. Mm-hmm. Mm. But you've been so blessed in the fact that your fans follow you whatever direction you go. Like mm-hmm. they ride for you properly, and it's proper Trust nice me. to see, man. <laughs> what me. are you saying this year then? New music. <sighs> you're working with Ill Blue a little bit. Twenty twenty. Listen, 2020. big up Ill Blue, big up ATG, Matt shooters yeah we've been making bangers all 2019 that's why i was quiet because really we just spent the time in the studio because mm. i knew i wanted to enter 2020 prepared with the right music um for all my wavy babies out there i love you all for riding with me like i go through periods where i'm a trap baby then i'm an ever jazz baby yeah. <laughs> then i just i just dip and dab through genres but 2020 for me is just about reintroducing the world to imddb um obviously we've just 2019 we dropped Nightcat, we dropped Famous, which was more of a commercial sound. Yeah. Although it's still DDB, it's more commercial, I'd say. Then we dropped a little care package for the, yeah. the core fans, so they know I'm still on this urban <laughs> jazz thing, like that urban jazz to the day I die. <laughs> so that was a couple vibes on there. And now that we enter 2020, I'm like, okay, I'm getting to the bag. Yeah. <laughs> I told you, I was trying to tell y'all from Quay, and y'all didn't want to listen. So 2020, um, we just dropped God's work with Ill Blue. Like, mm. Ill Blue are such a dream to think that I used to bang their music back in the day when they were on the funky house and all of that. And now I get to work with them. They don't even know, but low-key when we're in the studio, I'm like... Oh my gosh, yeah. this, this, this is pressure. This is pressure. But yeah, man, album on the way. We've got the tour on the way. We're doing a 23 day tour from February 28th till March 28th. It's going to be a UK European tour. Yeah. Um, what else is there to tell you? I'm so excited. I'm going to drop an album. I might even drop mixtapes. I might mm. even drop EPs. Like, there's so much music that I've gathered that I'm in. It's probably the best problem to have when yeah. you have too yeah, much music. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just sitting back like, yo, they need this music. <laughs> I have to let this go because I can't hold it in anymore. Woo, ciao. But yeah, man, good things come in. Um, I'm finally collaborating because okay, if yeah. you've been following me, I don't really do we collaborations. Do collaborations like that. I'm, I'm just very in my own little bubble. Like, if it happens, it happens. But I always want it to be organic. Yeah, Not yeah, like, yeah. oh, this is a bait move if that makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah.